Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I'll demonstrate how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2016. By the end of this video you'll be familiar with the Windows Server 2016 installation process and will have all the knowledge necessary to perform your own installs. So let's get started. In this video I'll demonstrate how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition. First things first though, what exactly do I mean by a clean installation? A clean installation, sometimes referred to as a bare metal installation, is the act of installing an operating system like Windows Server 2016 onto a computer that has no operating system installed whatsoever. To perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2016, you need to have access to the Windows Server 2016 installation files on some kind of bootable media. This could include a Windows Server 2016 DVD, an ISO file download which can be either burned to a DVD or mounted directly into Hyper-V if you plan to install Windows Server 2016 onto a virtual machine, or even a bootable USB flash drive. You can also install Windows Server 2016 over the network, providing you have some kind of deployment solution like Windows Deployment Services for example. Regardless of where you obtain your install files, you'll need to have these files and your chosen bootable media to hand when installing Windows Server 2016. In this video I will use a DVD for my choice of install media, but the process is very similar if not the same when using other media types. So I'll now change over to my bare metal server that has no operating system installed whatsoever, so that I can demonstrate how to perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2016. The first step to installing Windows Server 2016 is to insert your bootable media of choice into the server and power the server on. If the server has no operating system installed whatsoever, the computer should detect the bootable media straight away and will give you the option to boot from it. Since I'm using a DVD, I'm being prompted to press any key to boot from CD or DVD. If the message doesn't appear, you may have to go into the server's BIOS and modify the boot order so that the optical drive is listed as the first bootable device. To boot from the DVD, I will press Enter. At this point, the server will begin loading the contents of the DVD and will copy all of the temporary files necessary from the DVD onto the server. This should only take a moment or two. Once all of the files have been loaded, we'll be presented with the first of the Windows setup screens. From here we have to make some choices, including selecting your preferred language, choosing your preferred time and currency format, and choosing your keyboard and input method. For the best results, you should select the options that best match your geographical location. In my case, this is the United Kingdom. After making your selections, click the Next button. The next screen is a simple one, from here you essentially get two choices. Either install now to install Windows Server 2016, or repair your computer to access tools that can troubleshoot an existing installation that won't boot up. Since this is a bare metal computer with no operating system installed, I will click the Install Now button. At this point, Setup will start loading the next portion of the installation wizard. This should only take a moment. When Setup comes back, we're now being asked to activate Windows. Activation is necessary to ensure that your copy of Windows Server 2016 is genuine and isn't running concurrently on more servers than the license permits. Activating Windows Server 2016 is simply a matter of entering a 25-digit alphanumeric product key. The product key will usually accompany your installation media. To ensure that my copy of Windows Server 2016 is activated in genuine, I'll now enter my 25-digit product key and once finished I will click the Next button. On the next screen we're being asked to select the operating system you want to install. 
Since the product key I entered in the previous step was a data center edition product key, I'm able to install either the data center edition or the standard edition if I really wanted to. It's worth noting at this point that if the product key you entered was a standard edition product key, you'll only have the option of installing the standard edition. Since the data center edition has more features than the standard edition, this is the edition I want to install. As you can see, there are two install options available for the data center edition. Windows Server 2016 Data Center and Windows Server 2016 Data Center Desktop Experience. These options are essentially your choice of interface. If you select Windows Server 2016 Data Center, Windows Server 2016 will be installed with a Server Core interface. Server Core is an interface that's managed entirely from the Command Prompt and Windows PowerShell. Whereas the Windows Server 2016 Data Center Desktop Experience option will install the operating system with a Desktop Experience interface. The Desktop Experience interface replaces the full GUI interface found in Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. The Desktop Experience interface gives you the complete Windows graphical interface, including a Desktop, Start Menu, Taskbar and File Explorer. After choosing your preferred interface, in my case the Windows Server 2016 Data Center Desktop Experience interface, click the Next button to continue. The next screen of the Setup Wizard requires you to agree to the applicable notices and license terms. Take a moment to read these terms as they state what you legally can and cannot do with the software. Understand, if you want to install Windows Server 2016, you have to agree to the license terms. If you don't agree, you cannot install the software. When you've read and understood these terms, tick the checkbox I accept the license terms and then click Next. The next screens ask which type of installation do you want. From here we have two choices, either custom, which installs a fresh copy of Windows Server 2016, or upgrade, which takes an earlier version of Windows, such as Windows Server 2012 R2, and upgrades it to Windows Server 2016. Since I'm working on a bare metal server, I have no operating system currently installed and therefore nothing to upgrade. I'll therefore select the custom option to install a brand new copy of Windows Server 2016. The last screen of the setup wizard asks, where do you want to install Windows? From here you're required to choose a drive and a partition to install Windows Server 2016 onto. As you can see I have just one drive in this computer named Driver 0, which has a total capacity of 128 gigabytes. If I had additional drives in this computer, these would appear as Drive 1, Drive 2, Drive 3, etc. After choosing a drive to install Windows Server 2016 onto, you then have to decide how to partition the drive. At present, my Drive 0 hard disk is not partitioned, which is why all of the disk space is registered as unallocated. Unallocated space is essentially disk space that has not yet been allocated to a partition. When you partition a drive, the space on that drive is divided up into separate units of storage, which can be managed independently from one another. If you plan on using all of the disk space on the drive for your installation of Windows Server 2016, there is no need to partition the drive. In cases like this, a single partition that occupies the entire drive will automatically be created for you. Partitioning is only necessary if you don't want the operating system using all of the available space on the drive. For example, if you wanted to use just 80GB of the available 128GB on drive 0 for my operating system, then I could create an 80GB partition. Creating a partition is a matter of selecting the unallocated space you want to create the partition from, clicking New, entering the size of the partition you want to create in megabytes, 
in my case 81,920 megabytes, and then clicking Apply. When you create your first partition on a drive, you'll receive a notification prompt stating that Windows will create additional partitions to ensure that certain Windows features work correctly. If I OK this prompt, notice that two partitions have now been created on Drive 0, Partition 1 and Partition 2. Partition 1 is a small 500 megabyte partition and is known as the System Reserved Partition. The System Reserved Partition is an integral part of the operating system and contains boot configuration data for Windows Server 2016. Also, the system reserved partition is necessary in order for certain features, such as BitLocker, to work correctly. Partition 2, on the other hand, contains the bulk of the 80 GB of space I allocated, and is the partition that Windows will be installed into. Personally, I'm not a fan of partitioning drives, and would much prefer to store my operating system and data on entirely separate drives altogether. Understand, though, that partitioning is simply a matter of preference. How and whether or not you partition your drives is entirely up to you. As I'm not a fan of partitioning, I will now delete the two partitions I've just created. With the partitions now deleted, I will select drive 0 in its entirety for my install location, and will click Next. Immediately, Setup will begin copying the Windows files from the installation media onto the drive, and will then start getting files ready for installation. The whole process takes a number of minutes to complete, so I'll fast forward the process so we don't have to wait. When the files are ready for installation, Setup will then start installing features and updates, and will then finish up the installation. When the process does finally complete, you'll be informed that the server needs to reboot to complete the install, and that the server will restart itself automatically after 10 seconds. Following the reboot, when the server comes back up, it will then start the process of getting devices ready. This is likely to take a number of minutes, so I will again fast forward the video so we don't have to wait. When the server has finished getting devices ready, you will reach the Customize Settings screen. From here, you're required to choose a password for the administrator user account. Of course, best practice is to make your administrator password strong by including a mixture of upper and lowercase letters, numbers and even symbols. When choosing a password, you'll be asked to enter it twice. The act of doing this helps to ensure that your password has not been mistyped. After choosing your password, click the Finish button. Setup will begin the process of finalising the installation. This doesn't take too long, usually a few seconds. When the server comes back, you'll be presented with the Windows Server 2016 logon page. If I press Ctrl-Alt-Delete and enter the password I chose earlier, I'll then be logged into the system and will be presented with the default Windows Server 2016 desktop. Having reached the desktop, I can safely say that I've created a perfect installation of Windows Server 2016. Well, that's it for installing Windows Server 2016. In the next video, having installed Windows Server 2016, I'll demonstrate how to install roles and features onto the server so that you can build the right kind of server for your environment. I hope that you found this video helpful and educational. For more videos from Tech Tips from Will, check out our YouTube page. And remember to support our videos by liking them and by subscribing to our channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next. Tech Tip.